I accept Islam. Oh my god, what did I do to my mum? What the status of the mother in Islam and I've just treated mine like a piece of dirt. So then it became a mission, find my mum. It was mm. mission, find my mum. Where the hell is she in the world? You're English. You don't need to dress the dress of another country mm. just because you're a Muslim. Yeah. Be an English Muslim. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And that's when I thought, do you know what? Because I always say to all Muslims, you need to know why you're Muslim, man. Even if you're born Muslim, your family's from Morocco yeah. or Algeria or Pakistan or wherever you're yeah. You need to know why you're Muslim. Just because you're family heritage, yeah. that doesn't make Islam true. You mm. need to know and you need to teach your kids. I was walking around in a big black show al Kamis when I really? first came. Yeah. You, you come into me and say, where in the Bible does it say this? Whoa, yeah. whoa, 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 whoa. Who cares what the Bible says? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Who cares what the Bible says? Yeah, I actually love the name Hamza. And that's when Hamza is like attacking line, not just a, not, 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 not a cowardly line. Not, <laughs> not, not the one out of Wizard of Us. Ooh. The Hamza. Not the Hamza. <laughs> I want my courage. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum to lies, John Fontaine. Just before we begin the podcast, please make sure you click subscribe and also set your notifications. Please support on the Patreon account. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum to Allah wa barakatuh. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salam Rasulillah. Assalamu alaykum wa salam. Welcome to the Young Timex podcast. I'm with, here with Hamza. Assalamu alaykum. alaykum bro. Well, like, salam alaykum. How's alaykum. it going? Alhamdulillah. Hamza from Hyde Park, from Hamza's Den, from EF Dawa. Alhamdulillah. Also known as. <laughs> <laughs> what you're also known as? Uh, Darren. 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 But, uh, that name's kind of dissipating now. Yeah, everyone knows you. The, the identity is. Yeah, because yeah. people used to ask me. Are you Darren or you Hamza? And I used to think about it and I'm like, oh, whatever. Then I'm starting to think, of who calls me Darren now in my life? Yeah. I yeah, used to call you Darren like. He like, just still calls me Darren. Yeah, but maybe like five years ago, but now it's just. No, but he just called me Darren now. Yeah. Do you get me? Yeah, but, yeah. We, <laughs> but anyway, so yeah, so I think Darren is dissipating. There's less and less people in my life who knows him as Darren. Yeah. Hamza is becoming the identity. So did you use the name Darren for most of your Muslim life? Or did you change it in the beginning? I've not changed my name as in yeah, yeah. passport is that, you know what I mean? Yeah. I've just kept Darren and just in the Muslim community, I was known as Hamza. Yeah. I have to watch Lion of the Desert and all that. Not Lion of the Desert, um, The Message from Hala Lion yeah. and Hamza. And, you know, there was a little bit of a shirky reason as well. I was, I was a Leo, <laughs> my star sign. And, you know, yeah. I always like that personification. So, yeah, I just love the name Hamza. And that's when Hamza's like, Attacking line, not just a, not not not, ooh, not, not, not a cowardly line. Not the, <laughs> not, not the one out of Wizard of Us. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> like, the Hamza. Not yeah, the Hamza. Hamza. <laughs> <laughs> ooh, I want my courage. <laughs> no, not that one. So, so it the, is attacking line, is it? You know mm. what I mean? And then, yeah. So that yeah. So I, I've, I, I'm. If I go to my market, I'm known as Darren. My shop. The you know the, the management yeah, yeah. I'm Darren, yeah. um, I'm doctors I'm Darren. Don't call me Darren, call me Daz. That's oh, yeah, no, depends who you are, isn't it? Yeah. If you if you're in Manchester, I like Daz. Yeah. If you're in uh, Daza, Dazo. If yeah. you're in uh, yeah. London, I like Dow. Yeah. What Dow? Dow. I like Dow. Never heard that one before. No, no, London. So yeah, you know, like we say, Daz one, in Manchester, yeah. isn't it? short for Darren. Mm -hmm. In London, it's Dow, and in Wales, it's Da. I like Da. So it just oh. depends where you are. You know, Subhanallah, this is like the you know the Qira'at, the Qur'an? <laughs> you know when you're trying to, you know I use this in the, when we're explaining the Qira'at, you know like the preservation, yeah. how there's different um, modes of the Qur'an, but it's the same language. Yeah. Same but thing. Pr 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 uh, you just go south, yeah. south of the Watford Gap, SubhanAllah. Daz becomes Dao. Cross the Seven Bridge, Dao or Daz becomes Da. I like Da. But it's the same language. But it's, the sa yeah. it's, the, it's the same language. Yeah. It's just, uh, yeah. yeah. SubhanAllah. But, so, uh, Hamza, you you've been a Muslim for donkey's years. How, how I, I you? just I've just hit my anniversary. Twenty years. Twenty years. Seventh of October. What's the date today? Now. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've gone over my twenty years. Subhanallah. Marker. I've forever I've been saying nearly twenty years, nearly twenty years. But yeah. now it's done. I've I know your years. story. Your story is well known, so I don't want to go too <laughs> much into it. You know, you've said it a million times. Yeah, I know. It's, um, it starts to sound a little bit boring, but yeah. it's like, well, it's the truth. So what are you going to do? It's the truth, and and people benefit from it. But. Um, 
without going too much into it, mm. um, what was the main thing that, like, the real main thing that, that point when you're like, this is true? It's, for, for me, it was the whole setup. It was everything. It, it was, the, the guidance is key for me. You know, I, I say to people, look, if, if you call yourself Muslim and you're not doing Islam, then it's pointless. Islam is pointless for you. You've got to do Islam. Yeah. That's, that's the whole point of it. It's, it, it's a practical, tangible mm. thing, you know what I mean? So uh, for me, it was, a whole, it, was, it, was, it was the whole setup. It was just the whole guide. Mm. looking at how society is crumbling. Based, you know, my five poison uh, argument. And Islam's the only solution. So yeah. even when, you know, idiotic atheists come up to me in the park and say, Oh, you believe in this guy, daddy, you know, you know, you, you know you're delusional. Okay, okay. Well, I always say to them, what you got? What you got for me? Yeah. All right. Let's say, okay, oh, you've convinced me there's, a sky, there's no sky daddy and we all evolved from fish and whatever it is. All right, fine, fine, fine. What have we got for me now, man? Where's my guidance, yeah, man? Well, Boris? Yeah. Well, that's it. <laughs> Boris, <laughs> Boris Johnson is my <laughs> leader? Yeah. Come on, man. Yeah. You don't even follow Boris. So yeah. who are you following now? Yeah. And I always used to say this as well. I used to think atheism was easy. Honestly, I used to think it's, it's a cop-out. But it's not. Because you have to make every decision for yourself. Yeah. And you have to try to weigh up every, every conclusion and every uh, consequence mm. for yourself. You need to try to be either experiencing things or know people that are experiencing things to protect yourself from things that may occur that you yeah. don't comprehend. Yeah. And, I, and I always liken it to the example of my daughters. I've got 11, I've got 17. 11 year old needs guidance. But the same, but, and, Certain guidance for which she can't comprehend danger. Seventeen-year-old doesn't have to worry about that particular part of the guidance, yeah. because she's older and she's experienced more. She's comprehended it, but there's stuff she doesn't comprehend that I need to keep still protect her from, mm. you know. But then who who's the one guiding me? Yeah. Who's the one that protects me? Well, I'm an all-knowing. I know everything. I know yeah. all the consequences of everything. Yeah. Am I? No, no, of course I'm not. So who do I rely upon? I I, I look to the people who claim to be my leadership. Mm. Boris. Sorry, Boris. It's you. The book stops with you, mate. You're the one who tells me what that my value depressing. should be. That is a depressing oh, Honestly, I always, I always wind Jordan up with this. Yeah. I said, yeah. you wanted this mob. You wanted to cut us off from Europe and you wanted this mob to be in complete control of us. <laughs> Seriously. I mean, if there was any reason not to vote Brexit, it was that you'd be left with Boris as your leader, yeah. supreme leader, forget that. How do you trust about... anyone with a haircut like that? Oh, or my. lack of a haircut. Like <laughs> oh my God. So, so subhanAllah, 20 years is yeah. a long time. You must have been through a lot of different stages of your development. I mean, did you ever go through your, um, have you always been English? Down, no, like, have you no, always been no, like, no, 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 bro, bro, bro. You've been through I, was, I, I was walking around in a big black show, Al Kamis, when really? I first did, yeah. I accepted Islam October 2001, it was like Ramadan time just starting, mm. you know, Ramadan was in that, that late then. And I, I'm staying with Pakistanis, I'm in a Pakistani community, and what the Pakistanis, they want to eat, they wear show Al Kamis. So I got this massive big black show, Al Kamis. I really liked it, it was really cool, I felt really good walking <laughs> around it. Because I still flexed it up. Yeah. You know, I didn't wear school to shoes with it. You know what I mean? I wore gazelles with it. You know what I mean? I still <laughs> yeah, flexed yeah. it. And, I, and then I remember going to Morocco and I'm walking around the streets of Morocco with this big shawal kameez. <laughs> so I think back, I don't know what I'm doing. I got married. I had a shawal kameez with a big Moroccan tobe over the top. <laughs> so we, we, I did the shawal kameez phase. And then I realized that. I thought, well, why would I wear a shawal kameez? And then a shawal kameez. Then I went to Morocco. Then I got married after three and a half months. So I set this Islam three and a half months later in Morocco, getting married. Then I discovered Gilbert. The hoodie one, yeah, no, that was that was that was that was style. So man. you went through that. So with that, and then we'd wear I'd wear like a Lacoste, a Lacoste hoodie with it, and with, uh, with nice trainers. And I had a mate who was from Portugal who reverted as well, and he did the same. Mm. And we just styled out the the, the sunnah. Do you get me? Yeah. And then other brothers saw us when they come to the mosque. They seen us all looking cool, and they realised, wow, Islam is cool. Mm. Because you know, one of the main brothers, Salam alaikum, and us. Um, he got inspired by us coming to the mosque because he wasn't really practicing on that. And then he said, and he seen us, and he seen. Guys like him, mm. and we're all from the same generation. He, my mate from Portugal, was 1973. I'm 1973. Anas is 1973. We're all the same set generation. Do you get me? I, we kind of like made Islam cool in our environment that yeah. you, you can still, you know. And I used to go to the marketplace, and I I, I used to wear full Moroccan shirt, you know, stripe on and everything. I didn't care. Yeah. We used to go to like these non-Muslim areas. There's, there's a market called uh, Bovindan, proper proper white, uh, um, Hertfordshire. 
and, we, and we're just walking around like that. And you know, you got, you got the traders shaking the world, what's that doing it? You know what I mean? Yeah. We didn't care. We represented, you know what I mean? Yeah. And what happened was, the reason I came out of Kamis, I ended up in a fight in the, in the two fights actually. One, I was attacked by some Sikh guys thinking I'd done something, which yeah. has nothing to do with that. Another time, I got attacked by the EDL. Mm. And I was, I was in my marketplace, and um, I was minding my business. Well, actually, I wasn't minding my business. I was, I was chatting to a Lithuanian Satanist woman. Mm. So I, I, I was talking to her. And um, I heard this, <laughs> laughing. And I turned around, and there's like these two, two tall, skinny guys. Yeah. I was like, what are you laughing at? Yeah, you and all that BS, like, I said, why is it BS? Oh, well, you're moving all that Allah, yeah, 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 and what? What's the problem? Anyway, and then there was this big fat woman, right, and this skinny woman, and the big fat woman said, you're English, in yeah? I said, yeah, yeah, I'm English. She goes, well, why, are you, um, why, are you, why are you Muslim, then? why are you with these pedo? And she, she swore at me, yeah. And she knocked my perfumes over. Mm. And then uh, the, they all started laughing. And then the, the lads started going, burn a poppy, we'll burn a mosque, burn a poppy, we'll burn a mosque. E, 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 e. Right, that's right, yeah. Yeah, and, and uh, they were going, then they were going, scam, 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 scam. To me, right? Because yeah. these guys, I didn't know, they just got to Barking Town Hall to hand in a petition against a mosque being built, right? They just get to my stall, you know what I mean? And uh, anyway, so I said, you're scum. And, and the, the skinny lady, who'd been quiet all this time, she goes, what did you say? I said, you, you're all scum. She goes, Jason! And she called this tall skinny lad back. So I'm like, what are you going to do? Because <laughs> I was mad. Who are these people to come and interrupt my dawah? Yeah. Having a nice conversation. You come along, knock my perfumes over, mm. start chanting and shouting at me and all that. What do you think? So who are you, right? So anyway, and then from between, <laughs> I don't know where this geezer came from, right? Proper like a bull. <laughs> Stocky guy. What do you mean? What? Scam this, that, and he... And he was proper giving us, where's your stall? I'm going to burn his stall and all that. You ain't burning nothing, mate. Go, yeah, yeah, you're going to eat your dinner in the hospital tonight, mate. Yeah, right, mate. Yeah, but he, he, he was, he wasn't tall or anything, but he was just stocky. Yeah. Where's this guy come from? I'm, I'm going to, I don't mind fighting these skinny lads, but where's this geezer <laughs> come from? Do you yeah. know what I mean? And then he like, he, he sort of put his finger in my face and pushed me like that, right? So I, I, as he pushed me, I kind of like, <laughs> it was a reaction, yeah. So as he's pushing me, my, my left hook came, my left uppercut just went bang, and then bang, and then, and then you, you went back like that. And then I'm like, oh my God, I'm in a fight. I, I'm, in, I'm in this chemise. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, but luckily, it was a hoodie chemise with a slit. Yeah. So, so you could still, you know, yeah. so you come all like this. And I'm, Anyway, so after that, I thought, Do you know what? It's not safe to wear a chemise. Like I know an Algerian guy who's getting to fights. First thing he did was take his kameez off. And he's like virtually naked in the, you know what I mean? Because yeah, yeah. you can't fight in a kameez. Yeah. And that's how sad it was. The fact that I thought I need to go back to being English, like an English man. Because if I do get into a fight, at least, at least I've got a chance. Do you know what I mean? Imagine if one of those, you know, those style. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> did you get me? You can't even walk. Honestly, honestly. Like honestly. Yeah. So and then especially the long ones. Yeah. And then, then also I realised, and you know, my, my Amir from the Masjid, very wise guy. And he said to me, look, you're English. You don't need to dress the dress of another country mm. just because you're a Muslim. Yeah. Be an English Muslim. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And that's when I thought, do you know what? You're right. Why? Why? Mm. But that's the phase you go through. You, you immerse yeah. yourself, you get in it. And then the best decision I ever made was just, just, just go back English, man. Do, 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 my, do, my, yeah. do my football casual swag, which I've always loved. And then I real then the effect that I had, mm. I had I had English lads messaging me, saying we, we've been watching you in Speaker's Corner, yeah. and um, we're seeing you looking, you know, the way you're looking, like an English lad. But then you're talking religion, and mm. and our minds are struggling to comprehend it. Yeah, he's showing you're an English geezer, but at the same time, you're talking religious, and you're making sense, and no one can respond to what you're saying. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and that convinced a lot of people that Islam yeah, could be true. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Because, you know, most people, you know, say to me, I believe Islam is true. And, and I'm like, well, why do you believe Islam is true? He said, because, mm. because I've never seen anyone refute you. You speak with yeah. such confidence to people in the park, anyone, mm. you know, speaker's corner, like, roll your sleeves up, who's coming, who's next, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and you speak to anyone. 
and um, no one can no one can answer you. Yeah. Succinctly, do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So uh, no, no, it's it's. I, I'm sorry. I'm just part yeah. of one thing. So what you know, something to me. If you were there in a you know in a dress yeah. and a thuppy and Miss Whack, yeah, yeah. You, you would you would just look like you've been brainwashed. Mm. It would just, you know what I mean. You've, that would look like the yeah. typical. You needed a family to belong to. Yeah. Well, you don't. You wasn't comfortable in who you was, so you've kind yeah, of you, changed. You've changed your identity to become yeah. part of something else. But you're owning your, you know. I, I'll tell you. Who, sorry, I mean, I, I, you don't. You don't get more British than you, though. I mean, you are a proper Brit. <laughs> I mean, we're here in Turkey now. We were out yesterday. And, you know, you just remind me of some of my family members, you know, you're proper Brit abroad, you know. Everyone and, uh, speak English. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> you know, it's funny. And um, when you come to Islam, what was the biggest challenge you had, like, coming to Islam? Because I know... Coming to Islam? No, you, you became a Muslim. Right. And you already had a family at the time, didn't you? Yeah, I had uh, two daughters, uh, three and four years of age. I had a girlfriend of six years. Um... My business, you know, I've said this many times, my business was finance with my father as partnership and I was the engine room of everything. Without me in that business, that business was done. Mm. Do you get me? Yeah. It just needed um, him and his partner to be like, you know, to, to uh, you know, to get the car on lease and this, the stuff yeah. we needed to get office equipment and things like that. But I was the one who, who run it. Yeah. I'm the one who takes phone calls, speaks to people, visits people, fills out forms, deals with the lend. I, I did everything. Uh, and then some people get confused, you see, because when I tell my story, right, they, they seem to think I was some um, thief or whatever. But that was like when I was 15. What, that, that, you know, that was early on in my story. It, it doesn't yeah. mean because you were a thief and you were 15 doesn't mean perpetually you were a thief. Do you know yeah. what I mean? And so um, I knew Islam would cost me those things yeah. because I knew that I ain't taking this lightly. We're talking about absolute truth here. Yeah. We're, talk, we're talking about the existence of a creator. We're talking about heaven and hell fire here. We're talking about... Well, I always fight the invisible man when these wasps come. Are they aggressive, these Turkish wasps? No, not really, but they're just annoying. Yeah, yeah. so um, I knew I was going to take it seriously. Yeah. I, 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 and, and you know, this is one of the things you see. So I need to make sure it was true. Mm. Because I'm giving up everything. Mm. And I didn't want to give up everything. I said to my girlfriend, look, you don't have to marry me. Mm. So, you, so you don't have to become a Muslim. Yeah. Just marry me, but the kids will be brought up as Muslims. Mm. But you don't have to become a Muslim. And um, she would have married me the next day if I wasn't a Muslim. But in the non-Muslim world, um, marry, marriage is a piece of paper. They don't, even, and they don't even recognize the significance of marriage anymore. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You can get married anywhere now and God has been removed from the equation. And yeah. Do you get me? Irreligious people get, you know, it used to be to go to the church, get married. Oh, do you go to the church? Are you a Christian? And this, that, the other. Mm. It's all gone now. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But she would have married me before I was a Muslim. As soon as I become Muslim, the landscape changed. She'd heard the same dawah as me. She mm. was very close herself. Mm. But she had massive pressure put on her from her family. Mm. She got a big family um, in Wigan. And, and they, they piled the pressure on her. And she, they just basically said, we'll cut you off. You do that. You, yeah. You're not part of us anymore. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And, I, and I use that thing about, oh, well, they're going to die one day. And, mm. you know, then what? And then she just turned around and said to me, what if you die? Mm. Like, yeah, your point there. <laughs> you know what I mean. So, um, so yeah. So that cost me. You know, yeah. and so you, your, your, your wife, your children, your, your business. Yeah. You basically, you basically started everything, again, everything, everything. Started again from scratch. I did. I you know. Someone was laughing the other day when I said about my hijra from South Wales to London, but it, it was exactly that. Yeah. It was me going from a, a, an area which wasn't palatable to Islam for me, because I couldn't. Well, I'm a Muslim in a place where. There's no halal shops at all. Mm. Where am I going to work? What am I going to do? What? And, and, and mm. Hamda, I had a mini infrastructure prepared for me in London. Mm. Yeah. And even when I came to London, I didn't give up on my girlfriend. For 10 weeks, I tried with her. So, so for 10 weeks, I tried, and, and then that was that. Yeah. But I knew if you're going to do something, you do it. Yeah. You know? And I, I, I know later on, I think, was I too harsh? Could I have rushed it? Could I have delayed it? This, that, the other. Kind of Allah, it was done. Yeah, subhanAllah. But then I'm is. thinking, whatever, yeah. in Morocco, then three and a half months later, I get married and I've yeah. been married 20 years. And do you know what I mean? So it's like, mm. and Allah's, I know, and I tr trust in Allah. Mm. I, I really did, but trust in Allah. Mm. I want to ask you about, I want to get onto Hyde Park. Oh, God, I got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before that, I just, one last thing. How did your parents take it, you becoming a Muslim? Um, How was that, as it, you know? Well, I hadn't seen my mum uh, mm. for like 10, 10 years up to that point. Okay. So I, she didn't know. 
she because my parents split when I was young. My mum was somewhere in Scotland. All I knew she was somewhere in Scotland. Mm. And um, my dad, he he refused to speak to me for fifteen years. Oh. My father, even even five years later, when my brother committed suicide, so. he, and um, he spoke to me at that point actually, because uh, I was speaking to my aunties about it, and my, you know, your dad's just arrived. So I said, ask him, does he want to speak to me? So he came on the phone, and I was like, uh, yeah, sorry to hear about Wayne, this, that, the other. Uh, and my dad goes, yeah, you have made my peace with him. Because my dad has a habit of falling out with people. Mm. And he fell out with my brother. Just, just you know, I became Muslim, he fell out with me. He fell out with my brother over something completely different. He mm. fell out with my sister over something completely different. He's a very stubborn man, mm. yeah? And he fell out with my brother. And in that, in that, in that time when he fell out with him, my brother com committed suicide as a manic depressive. Mm -hmm. Now, my brother wasn't the type of guy who would be a manic depressive. He was a cool dude, man. He had a history. He used to be a drug dealer. He, used to, he, he danced on stage with Prodigy. Do you get yeah, me? Yeah, yeah. He was in the Royal Navy. He, you know, he, 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 was, he was a cool guy. And when I, I was shocked that he killed himself. I thought he's the last guy who's going to kill himself. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I don't really know the full details of it. But anyway, so, so I'm thinking, and he said, yeah, yeah, I've made my peace with him. And I'm thinking, but he's dead. I made your peace with him. So I'm thinking, I didn't say that, I didn't say that. Yeah. But then I thought, oh, this could be my opportune moment. This could be the time when I can say, I said, yeah, yeah, I think we should make our peace as well. And his response was like, no, 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 you made your bed, you lie in it. Oh, and I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. My brother's dead and you've made your peace with him. And I'm still alive. <laughs> and you won't make your peace with me. Hmm. And that was it. That was, and then, then another 10 years passed before he would speak to me. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. But, you know, it is where it is. But it's just madness, isn't it? Yeah. You make your peace with the dead person, but the live person, your only son that's left. Mm. But, but like I say, I, I, in August this year, I brought him down. And his yeah. last words to me before he left, he goes, I'm so proud of you. Mashallah. I'm so proud of what you do. And he goes, I love you so much. And I couldn't have a better son. Mashallah. And I was like, what? Really? You were saying that to me? And what I'd done, I deliberately took him to this Islamic fair. It was called Almo School Fair near where I live. And it was all Islamic fun fair. Everything halal, everything atas, all this kind of stuff. He felt like he was in Turkey. <laughs> he felt like he was in a bazaar. Do you know yeah. what I mean? And everyone was smiling to him. Mm. Oh, you're Hamza's dad. Oh, wow, welcome. From every walk of life, Pakistanis, Algerians, this, that. But all he got was smiles. Wow, you must be so proud of your son, what he's doing. We love him. And he's like, these people kind of like you, don't they? <laughs> I'm like, mm -hmm. yeah. And then when we went to London, I'm even tearing up thinking about it. Even when we went to London, strangers in the street are stopping. Hamza. Mm -hmm. uh, and he's like, no, you don't. Like. I said, yeah, 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 that's why it is. You know? and, and there was even when you we know, went... You know, non-Muslims, they, they, they like fame as well, don't they? Yeah. Like my dad used to, that's what he misses. Because I was, when I was a jazz singer, <laughs> you don't know, darling. <laughs> you know, when I was a jazz well, singer, <laughs> when I was a jazz singer, my dad was he would say, you know, everyone knows John. He said even if he was walking down the street with a pope, they'd say, "Who's that with John?" Oh you know? wow, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because they, they, but they like it, yeah. like the fame and the, you know, the kind of recognition. So he he noticed that about you, and people appreciated your yeah, work. Yeah, and, and and he was he, he, so he's seen us, and now my dad was a Daily Mail. Brexit voting, Boris Johnson, Islam a terrorist. Yeah. Guy, that's what it is. You know, and um, it's like it's like I go to meet an Islamophobe. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly. Yeah. But this year broke him. Oh, you can't be an Islamophobe after you've experienced what I've put you through. When you meet these Muslims and they're, all they're doing is smiling at you. Yeah. Yeah? yeah. And, and, and you know what topped it off? There was this Algerian guy who works at, on, on the events, you know, near uh, London Dungeon and all that. And um, he said, Hamza, because we're going to the London Dungeon. He goes, oh, why didn't you get tickets through me? I could have helped you. Yeah, I said, I know, I booked everything, you know, I do it. I goes, and then uh, my dad was, was going to stay over an extra day. And he wanted, he wanted to do the London bus ride. So I said to this brother, brother, do you think you'd be able to, um, you know, give some kind of discounts? You know, they want to do the London tour. He goes, no, actually, don't worry, man. Complimentary tickets. I'll give him complimentary tickets. Mm -hmm. And then he took my dad's uh, email and this, that. And then he emailed him and they, they went around London for free. My dad cannot be an Islamophobe no more. Yeah. When he is Muslims of this, Muslims of that, and he thinks back to that weekend, smashed, completely to smithereens. Mm -hmm. Now that's my dad. Now my mum, she didn't know I'd become. A, she she didn't know because I didn't have any contact with her. And the amazing thing was, and this was really really sad. And I think I have said this before, but I'll, have I said this before? That my mum. Uh, no, I don't think I don't think everyone's got this lovely thing about my mum. My mum said some horrible things about me. 
with, when I was with my girlfriend, when I was living in Wigan. And this is one of the things that turned my girlfriend's family against me. Mm. She says some despicable things about me. My mum, right? That's funny. And um, anyway, years later, I've moved back to Wales. Anyway, one day the phone goes, and it's my mum on the phone. And she's saying, I just want to say I'm sorry. Mm. I said, I'm not interested in anything you've got to say. Um, yeah, no, no, but I, I want to apologise. I'm not interested in anything you've got to say. Yeah, but please, I just want you to forgive me. I'm not interested in anything you've got to say. Yeah, but I'm not interested in anything you've got to say. So, and that was the end of my mum at that point. Because she said despicable things about me which were completely unfounded and she poisoned my, my girlfriend's family, you know, mm. against me in this way. And so um, that was my mum. My mum's in Scotland doing her thing, wherever it is where it is. I accept Islam. Oh my God, what did I do to my mum? What the status of the mother in Islam, and I've just treated mine like a piece of dirt. So then it became a mission, find my mum. It was mm. mission, find my mum. Where the hell is she in the world? Where is she? I have to, I have to contact her just to apologize for that phone call and the way I treated her. And um, it took me a while. And then somebody said, I think she's in Shetland Isles. Mm. It's like, where? Shetland bloody Isles. Have you seen Shetland Isles where it is? <laughs> Do you know the closest train station yeah, in Shetland Isles is Norway? <laughs> <laughs> it is like, you know, Britain's here. Shetland Isles is like, here. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, and she'd found out through the grapevine that I'd become a Muslim. Mm. So she was like, she wants to know what Islam is now. She wants to find mm. out about it. She contacts this society. Have you heard of the Henry Jackson Society? Yeah. Yeah. So she goes to the Henry Jackson Society to get information on Islam. So when I finally, finally got back in touch with my mum, first question, why did your prophet marry a six-year-old? I was like, oh, fuck. Of all the questions, of all the things I have to contend with, you that's the first question. Because Henry Jackson Society is an Islamophobic society. Yeah, yeah. And it just poisoned her mind against Islam. It was unreal. I was like, I had to like deprogram her. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But she was, I mean, and she was so proud of it from the get go. Mm. She would tell everybody, my son's a Muslim, this is his videos, really? this, that. Yeah, wow. you know what I mean? And even, she even had a, a guy who came to like fix her, I think, fix some heating or something in her house, right? And she see, he seen a picture of me. And he's like, I know that guy. She goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's a speaker. Do you get me? He's just like, man, she, was, she couldn't be prouder. Mm. And so it was chalk and cheese with my dad and my mum, you know. But I know my dad was hurt because it cost him the business. It, it cost him his granddaughters because my, my ex, she went back to Wigan. So he lost contact with his granddaughters and he loved them. So yeah. I understand the bitterness. I do get yeah. that. I do get yeah. that. But my mum, she was the other way. And my mum was married to an atheist guy, right? Same age as me, for God's sake. The guy's my age, right? And he's such a nice guy. And I told this to his face. I said, look, mate, you're a fantastic carer for my mum. For her well-being and her health. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you, you are... You, no, I don't think anyone could beat you for the way you care about my mum. Yeah. Because he was a toy boy from the age of 26 or whatever. Yeah. Right. And... But you're devastating for her mind and soul. Mm. Yeah. You can't offer her anything for her intelligence and her mind, and you're devastating for her soul, yeah. her afterlife. I told my mum this, and I told him this. And when I used to speak to my mum, we'd have like, we would have three hour conversations. There's no way would a conversation with my mum last less than three hours. Mm. Because what it was, she was married to this, he's a nice guy, I'm gonna keep saying it, he's a nice guy. So Ian, if you're watching, you're a nice guy. But she couldn't have an intellectual conversation. Yeah. And it's like she was thirsting for, Somebody to yeah. bloody speak to about something intelligent, you know yeah. what I mean? Something she saw on National Geographic or whatever it may be. Yeah. And we'd have three hour conversations about yeah. all sorts of stuff. And, uh, and, th and this now is, uh, I, I always say this to people who are thinking of giving dower to their parents and that they're delaying it and this, that, the other. Finally, my mum my said, oh, I'm, I'm reading the Bible. But she didn't believe the Bible. Mm. She used to mock, she used to like say, yeah, you know, Jacob's ladder, the angels, that's like a spaceship and aliens mm. were going up and, the, and the, you know, the angel ascended in a fiery chariot. Well, back then, if there was a spaceship, a uh, fiery chariot, it would be a fiery chariot to them because vehicles mm. were chariots. So she believed in aliens, but not religion. 
Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but she went through different different stages. Yeah. And she said, I've just started to read the Bible. I said, what are you bloody reading that nonsense for? She goes, yeah, I know, but you know. I said, no, 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 do you mean no? Yeah, you know, but no. Mm. I said, read the Quran. And she goes, okay, then you send me one. And I didn't. Mm. And two weeks later, she had a fall. And she, she, something in her brain went from this fall. And she ended up in uh, an old person's home, and she, and she died in the old person's home this year. Mm. And this, she went from this brilliant lady who I could see needed a care if she's like 73. But she's got the mind of a 30-year-old. Do you get me? And um, it went. She went from this brilliant three-hour talk about philosophy, this, that, the other, to a lady who didn't even know who I was. She used to think she had a son called Elvis and this, that. And, and you know, the people were saying to me, oh, you have to go with it. What? <laughs> you, have to, you have to go with the story. What, well, so you're Elvis? Yeah, you, you just have to go with the fantasy. And I'm, you know me, I can't deal with that. I can't. I can't. <laughs> I <just> can't. <laughs> This is one of my, you know, if anyone wants to know my weakness, right, is dealing with people who are mentally ill. Mm. I can't do it because there's no logic, there's no rationale. Mm. And, you know, and I'm just like always on a blah, blah, blah. You've like, shown that in your recent video with the Satanist in Hyde Park. <laughs> 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 so, so I mean, you know, you, you, so you, your mother passed away recently, so Yeah, February this year. Jordan yeah. came with me, actually. Cause I, I, yeah, I remember because I, I, I was on the phone to Jordan. You remember? You, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. what, what yeah. happened was I said, I'm going up to my mum's funeral. And he goes, who's going with you? I said, my, my sister will be there. No one could go. It was snowing and it was yeah. COVID and all that. Was it COVID then? Yeah, it was COVID. And, and Scotland's quite tough on COVID, you know what mm. I mean? And um, who's going with you? I said, no one's going with me. He goes, I'll come. Mm. And, he, and he, he spent £600 booking a ticket to come fly, just yeah, fly sure. to Aberdeen with me. And uh, yeah, I put you in touch with the brother in Aberdeen. Did oh, he, did he, did he yeah, yeah, because yeah, 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 yeah. like, everything was shut. Yeah, so we was hanging around Aberdeen. Yeah. So we went, oh, we went, we did a TikTok. Well, it was it not TikTok? Was it TikTok? We went on. Yeah, something like that. And then you, 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 yeah, you yeah. jumped on, and then we got this brother come. They come and picked us up, yeah. and they took us for food. And nice brother, oh, Michelle, yeah. this is Islam. Yeah, I know, I know, subhanallah. This is Islam. You know, I've been in Turkey now. Yeah, mashallah. I'm getting message, brother. You need to come and meet us. We need to have some. I want to take you to show you this. And mm. It's just like. You, you know, we were speaking about it last night when we was walking. Yeah. You were saying, like, you can't beat it, can you? You, you know, you, you, you what can't. more do you want? I could go to, I could go to any country in the world yeah. and you'll get the same treatment. Yeah. I've got brother saying, brother, when you come into Medina, I'm hosting you. Mm. This is Islam. Yeah. And, you, and you know, in the non-Muslims, you can't get this. You, you can't. can't get this you because can't. you're in a yeah. you're in this materialistic world where benefit, benefit, benefit. You know, in, with with non-Muslims, you're always kind of arguing whose round it is, who's paying for yeah. it. You know, but here it's like everyone's fighting everyone's for whose fighting. round it is. You know, you know if, I got like I give you an example, right? In my bloody in my shop, right? I got these women they're coming to buy scarves, yeah, and they start crying about the price. Oh, I can do this, do that, do this, that. And I'm like, what? Yeah, come on, you should be this expensive, this, that, the other. Mm. And then when I settle the price. They start fighting over who's going to pay. I said, whoa, whoa, what are you doing? You've just been complaining about the price. Now you're fighting to pay. Yeah. It's well, you, you know, can you pay the full price, love? You know, you know yeah. what I mean? But yeah, because what happens is this, you see. Yeah. Human beings by nature, we're, we're only motivated by two things. And two things only. And I challenge anyone to bring anything more. Yeah? Punishment or reward. Mm. You want us to do something? What are you going to give me? If I don't do it, what are you going to do to me? Yeah. That's it. You know, you park on double yellow lines, yeah, you're going to get a ticket. Don't park on double yellow lines, mate. That's yeah. your motivation. This, and this is how human beings we are by nature. So when it comes to the benefit side, people, what am I going to get for it? And the problem the non-Muslim has, yeah. there we are. he doesn't have the uh, metaphysical benefit. Yeah. Yeah, because he's just saying what am I going to get, or how much money am I going to get, what, what am I going to eat, or what, you know, what, what's going to be in my hand, what I'm going to be able to use. But we, we're using a currency that's unlike yeah. no other. <laughs> yeah, we don't need to say, yeah, I'm going to give you this. We go, just make dua for me. Yeah. Just make dua for me that, you know, Allah gives me this. And that is a currency that you can't have if you ain't a Muslim. Yeah. And it's the highest currency. Yeah. Let's get to Hyde Park. Yeah, go on. Because I know you want to you want to get back to Istanbul. And, um, I'm trying to get back to Istanbul. Yeah. <laughs> it's been 30 <laughs> minutes. How long has it been? It's been an hour of this. So, Hyde Park, so far, like, you've yeah. been going to Hyde Park for about seven years. Yeah, yeah, that's what I have. And um, Hyde Park's become really popular right now, especially on YouTube, you know. Yeah. Probably the most controversial place in the world, you know. You, you, yeah. Every religion, every philosophy, every 
political situation is discussed there. Mm -hmm. And it's historical. It's a historical place known where people can come and argue and debate on different things. Yeah. And it's just kind of these days, Muslims are at the forefront of Hyde Park. You know, you're one of the faces. You're one of the culprits. <laughs> You know, you got, you know, you got the Sabor, um, yep. Hashim, Mansour, Hashim, Hijab. Before you had the likes of Abdulhim Green and all them who made it famous. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, Hamza Tons. You know, and your videos have become very popular. I know, because over the past couple of years, instead of people saying are you Abdulhim Green, they're saying are you Hamza. <laughs> <laughs> things are changing. Uh, yeah. you know, so I know I know that things have changed over so the past couple of years. So you know, the videos are blew up. You know. Yeah. People are watching them all over the world. They translate it in different languages. Yeah. We heard How, we heard villages in Indonesia have big screens with EF yeah. Tower in Indonesian subtitles. Yeah. So how has it changed your life? Like this kind of recognition? I'm a, I'm a shy person, believe it or not. Get I'm telling yeah, you. Never. When never. when people meet me in the street, well, you and stuff, are not shy. No, I am. <laughs> no. I am. I am. <laughs> <laughs> I will. My oh, courage. I'm the lion. No, no, no. I, I, I'm bro, shy. bro, bro. <laughs> Listen, you're you're a proper. You, if you don't mind me saying, you are Del Boy. Uh, I wouldn't. Yeah. Uh, you, you are. You know what? You, you know why? You, you know people guy. say that. People say that. You're People, no, but, uh, people say a Del Boy, right? You're on the street. I, I but think, I'm going to count your Del Boy claim. I've seen what you. I'm Rodney. <laughs> no, no, yeah, yeah. No, no, but, but, no, but with Del Boy, he's always trying to do a scam. Okay, yeah, it's not. I don't do that. But yeah, 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 yeah. But you know, yesterday we went to the market. The way you dealt with people, right? And I have to admit, I don't like everything you say or do. Right? I'm, I'm not, I'm not. A, yeah, I'm yeah, not a fanboy. Yeah, yeah, I get that. I get that. I get that. You know, I, I don't agree with everything you say. Yeah, I agree. There's a lot I don't agree. With. But there's some things I'm like, I agree with that. And some Muslims are like, why is he doing that? I'm like, no, that's he's doing that at the right time. Yeah. You know, like the Satanist thing you did with it. <laughs> You treat, I, I like the way you treated him, right? So there's things that I agree with, which so the Muslims don't, and there's things that yeah, I don't. Yeah, look, look, you will, you, look I, I will never please everybody, and you will never please exactly. everybody. The, yesterday, we were getting some water from the guy. <laughs> what was you doing? You know, you're, having a, you're playing about with him, and I'm thinking, this is going to end in a fight. You know, you're like one lira or two lira, and they're like, no, take the water back. What was he like at the end? At the end, you were both just like laughing your heads off, and like old friends. Yeah. And I was like, what happened there? <laughs> you know, I thought you were going to end up in a fight. But, you know, I knew this is your experience on the markets, dealing with people. You know what my wife says? She says you always leave an imprint wherever you go. Yeah. People know you've been there. If you can return yeah. to a place, they'll know, they'll remember you when you come back. And I, I don't know if I like to do it. I don't know if I deliberately do it. I just, I, I don't know. I did, like I walked in your streets yesterday yeah. and uh, I was walking, I could slam to everybody, the baker, the yeah, butcher, yeah. the candlestick maker, everyone. Do you yeah. know what I mean? And you know, look at what's this ginger English guy. I think they're going to think it's you, mate. Like I said, you're going to be famous in your town. As long as they're not all asking me for the money. Yeah, 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 yeah. You yeah. <laughs> said you're going to come back and pay for those donuts. Where's, where's the dough? But um, yeah, yeah, no, I, 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 I like to. Just the most randomest person. Yeah. Who's you know that that poor water seller? He's been there all day selling water. Yeah. And all he's doing is selling water. Nobody cares about him. Yeah, it's like two lira, like. Yeah, but nobody feet. cares. Nobody yeah. cares about him. Yeah. Look at his, he enjoyed that interaction. He loved it, bro. He put a smile in his it, it, face. It was like a, a, a rainbow like on yeah, his stall for yeah, like, yeah, I, you know what I mean? You know, it was fantastic. To tell you the truth, I was, I was like, wow, that's pretty good. Yeah, you know? just, you, know, you, just, you, seen, but, you, you should have seen how I have been in yeah, Istanbul. Yeah. I, I conquered Istanbul, alhamdulillah, in the sense of, I just, just made my mark, I met the yeah. right people. I, yeah. I, and as long as he spoke English, then as soon as you know, someone you, spoke you've English, you've got that type of personality where people either love you or hate you. Yeah, you know, it's like take me, or, yeah, yeah, take me, or leave you me. know. And, and sometimes you come across as a right <sighs> arrogant. Who is this guy, right? I'm trying to work on that. I know. I'm trying but to work. But sometimes on that. it's like you know, the, I'm in in a similar way. I have, I have a similar thing. It's like if you're sincere, we're going to get along. Yeah. But if you're an idiot. You're going to get treated as one. Yes. You know, and, and um, so how has Hyde Park changed and impacted your life? You know, you're getting recognized on the streets and uh, how do your family think of it now, like your wife and your kids? Well, you know, many times they'll say to me, you're not a Hyde Park now. Yeah. Because I don't change. Yeah. It ain't an act. Because you're very argumentative. Yeah. <laughs> like I've been told recently that as well. And I'm, I'm trying, I'm trying to yeah. curb it. I'm, tr I'm trying to curb yeah. it. Um, uh, but 
the, the Hyde Park was the platform. Hamza's yeah. Den is what's taking it forward now. Yeah. Uh, Hyde Park is what people made people care about what I've got to say. Mm. You see my Hamza's Den, it's a mishmash of all sorts. It's a Truman Show. Yeah. yeah. And people seem to love it. This Hamza's Den and the online platform is a very, very recent thing because Colby's just changed everything. Colby changed the So landscape. Hyde Park was closed for how long? Two years. And you took it online? Well, the EF Tower took it online first. Yeah. And then I, I, and then I was thinking, because because we used to go to Hyde Park once a month. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, we used to go, we used to do the videos, we used to go back, get edited, put up once a week, four or five videos over the course of the month, back to speak. That was our routine. But what happened with the online stuff, we, we, we started being together more and differences of opinions and this should be up, this shouldn't be up and this, that, the other, because it was different content. And there was, we did this ration challenge, me, Ben and Jordan. Mm. And I wanted to like put videos of me trying to cook a flatbread and stuff like that. You mm. know what I mean? Yeah. And I was told off by some of the EF Dower saying, this is not, because I just upload stuff. Yeah. I, exactly what I do with that, I just uploaded yeah. it. And then what are you doing? Why are you putting this on EF Dower? We, 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 we have a, um, we have a certain standard. Yeah. And you're just putting this mobile phone filming of frying a quail egg. Do you know what I mean? And, and it, was, it was at that point that I thought, you know what? I'm kind of losing control in, in, in what I'm doing. Yeah. Because I have to answer to other people and other people to agree with me. And, so, and I have no problem with that. Mm. But I said to I, I need my own, I need my own platform, man. Yeah. And you know, and you, you know, you know, if you watch EF Tower, there are people who love Abbas. So if you go to, to, to EF Tower, right, you look at the comment section, right? You'll see the people love, love Abbas, love him. Oh, that Hamza's too harsh. That Hamza needs to calm down. Yeah. You know, why can't Hamza be more like Abbas? Right. And I'm like, so clearly, people, because we're a group, some like me, some like the doctor, some yeah, like yeah. Abbas, they just, you will see other comments that say things like, oh, Hamza was needed here. Abbas yeah. was too soft. Where was Hamza? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We needed that. I said that to you the other week. Didn't yeah. I? That, where I thought, I felt like the Australian atheist guy was running rings around yeah, his brothers. Completely. He needed a, someone to come and I say, just, we, we, get out uh, of here. We, you know? we demolished him. Yeah, we said, demolished yeah. him because, because Yusuf said to him, yeah. Um, have you ever been wrong? And yeah. he goes, well, I've been proved wrong today. Because yeah. we just mashed him. Yeah. And then they... But anyway, so the point I'm trying to make is, so, so you, I could see in the comment section there were people who support him, you know. Yeah, yeah. And I said to myself, you know what? I'm going to do my own thing where my people who like me will come with me. Yeah. And, if they, and if they don't like, if they're not into the Abbas softness, then they've got a platform. And if they don't like me, then they can keep watching um, yeah. EF Tower. And you're still on EF Tower. And, well. and even though EF Tower spawned again, though, so the doctors have opened up his foundational thoughts. So if you like, uh, if you like uh, the Doctor Imran and his brilliant, brilliant content. Yeah, mashallah. Foundational he's... thoughts, man. Yeah. He's been doing. The, he's been taking Christian Prince down years ago. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So if you like his style, he has his own channel now. If you like Abbas and his eloquence, he's got conversation in Islam. He hasn't really done much with it, but he's got his own thing as well. Do you get me? And so that's what Ham so Hamza's then it became mm. my cult. <laughs> no, no, no. It got, it's got cult like status in the sense of these are people who are with me. They don't think I'm harsh. If someone mm. says I'm harsh, they'll get rinsed in the comment section. What do you mean he's mm. harsh? He just tells people the way it is. Mm. Do you get me? So now I'm getting more known for that. And it's kind of hard because I'm like, when people ask, ask me for my YouTube channel, do I tell them EF Thawa or do I tell them Hamza's then? Do you know what I mean? I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm thinking, which, which one do I say I am? I'm thinking of getting a business card made up with both. If thou one side, Hamza's then the other side. Mm. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, what's the question? <laughs> <laughs> no, I was saying, how's it, how's it impacted? Impacted my life, yeah, yeah right. Like, so I'm getting recognized. I get not recognized. just high part, but the online. Yeah. My kids crack me up. Yeah. Someone, I, I, I could be anywhere, right? Walking with my kids, right? So I go, Salam alaikum, Hamza. Mm. And the little one looks at you and goes, Is that a fan? Because I, I think so. Yeah. I, think, I don't know. She goes, Do you know him? I said, I don't know. He was a fan, wasn't he? Yeah. And they said, oh, the fan has the look in their eyes that, oh, it's Hamza. Do you get me? Yeah. And it's nice. Now, it used to be cringy at first. Mm. And, oh, yeah, yeah, it's me. But now I'm, I realize now that how, how excited would I be if someone that I looked up to yeah. was in my presence? You know, and I forget that. Yeah. They're seeing Hamza. Yeah. The Hamza, the, the one they're watching, the one that their wives are sick of hearing his bloody voice because he's always on the TV. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And he's here. 
And then they're like, wow, this is making their day. This is their day. They're taking that photo. They're not just taking a photo. I've taken a photo. That photo's going on Facebook, social media. Look where I'm at today. Yeah. This is brightening up their lives. And so I've, I've come away from being cringy now. I embrace it now. Yeah, I, I was similar to that in the beginning. It's yeah, like, yeah. It's like, you know, but then you realize, like, um, you know, people who had an impact on me when I first came to Islam, yeah. like Abdulheen Green, Yusuf Estes, if they could just kind of shunned you, when you wanted a yeah. selfie, you know, you're like, oh, well, it kind of spoils your... Yeah, you, you, you are arrogant, yeah. mate. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I'm like, yeah, yeah I, I just embrace it now. Yeah. I mean, I had one guy, I and mean, this is, I think, the most embarrassed thing I've, <laughs> that's ever occurred to me. Mm. It happened in Slough. Uh, and if his brother's watching, I forgive me. <laughs> he stood for five minutes, holding my hand, crying. Spoiling. I cannot believe I made dua to Allah. That one day I meet you and I come out today and here you are and oh Allah, Allah, what are you doing? Subhanallah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. That's how much it meant to him. And so, you know, this is for, you know, it's not like, oh, I'm a celebrity. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But I've, walking around Istanbul, I've had people from Kuwait and Luxembourg, New York. One guy come running, you know, from the mosque. Are you Hamza? Sheikh Hamza? I'm, like, I'm not Sheikh, mate, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Hamza. Oh, man, I watch all your stuff. I'm from New York, this, that. You've been yeah. such an inspiration on me. I can't believe you're here, man. I can't believe you're here, man. I got to take a Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. It's nice. Yeah, Hamza, it's nice. Yeah. Not because I'm thinking, hey, yeah, I'm Hamza. I'm thinking, wow, you man. See, you're seeing that your, that your hard work is, is affecting and helping Because you know? sometimes I used yeah. to think, I go to the park, I mouth off. Yeah. I walk through that gate, don't shut up. Yeah. And then I get messages from people, you've brought me back to the deen, you've shown me the Islam, I didn't yeah. realise the treasure we had, you're speaking to a Muslim, I'm so ashamed that I'm a Muslim man, I don't even, yeah. do you know what I mean? Because yeah. I always say to all Muslims, you need to know why you're Muslim man, even if you're born Muslim, your family's from Morocco yeah. or Algeria or Pakistan or wherever you're, yeah. you need to know why you're a Muslim, just because you're family heritage, yeah. that doesn't make Islam true, you yeah. need to know and you need to teach your kids. Let's get into some of the, just before you go, some of the... Let's get into what? Some, some of the, <laughs> Let's get into what time the ferry is to uh, Istanbul. Some, some, of the, some of the methods of, of dower in Hyde Park, you know. <laughs> oh, let's um, get into that now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. Just, some, just, just quickly, some of the methods, because... Go on. Um, I, share a, I share some similar... I agree with you on some of your approaches, especially when it comes to Christianity. Right. Because um, I think we share... 90% the same kind of understanding. Completely. You know, which chop is, them off at the knees. Chop it off at the knees. You know, the Bible is not from God, not from Allah. That's it. You have no proof yeah. for your religion. Done. This is you why know. that apostate parasite thing is that. Uh, <laughs> I just call it apostate parasite because he preys upon other people's videos and takes clips and stuff. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, you, you're trying to use a standard. You, you come into me and say, where in the Bible does it say this? Whoa, yeah. whoa, 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 whoa. Who cares what the Bible says? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Who cares what the Bible says? And the amazing yeah. thing is, right? Yeah. You, as a positive parasite, you don't care what the Bible says. You don't believe what the Bible says. Yeah. So what, by, by trying to try and, oh yeah, it's, we, we did a good job. We spoke about Baka and all that stuff. Right? But the reality is this. I'm giving, you're giving too much validation to this book. Yeah. This is not historically reliable. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So why are you trying to pin something historical upon what this book says? Yeah? Yeah. It ain't reliable. And I'm, you know, I keep going, I'm going to do this response to a positive parasite on this Baka thing and Maka thing and this and that. I'm, I'm just like, what the hell am I doing? Yeah. This is not reliable. Yeah. Why am I trying the to show line you? Bottom is, we don't believe in it. Yeah. You know, it's like, well, yeah. Why? Why am I trying to show yeah. you it? As if I believe in this. Yeah. This is the Quran. Yeah. yeah, I believe in this. Yeah. Yeah. More than this. Yeah. And here it says it. So this is my validation. Why? Yeah. Why do I have to validate yeah. to you? You're not even a bloody Christian. You don't even believe this is historically reliable. You don't even believe. Listen to this, yeah. right? Where did Abraham say build the Kaaba? You don't believe in Abraham. Yeah. What are you asking me about Abraham for? You don't even believe in Abraham. You don't believe in Moses. Yeah. You don't believe the part of the sea. That Bible says so. Do you believe it happened historically? No. So why do you? You don't care what it says. It's true. <laughs> So it's why true. do you want me to find it? It's true. You've, you've, got, you've got a character <laughs> in one religious book, which is the Quran. Yeah. Right? And speaking about Mecca, and then you've got <coughs> the same character in another religious book. So the argument is, what is the, the evidence outside of that? It's so, uh, so frustrating, yeah. man. And you, you also, um, <laughs> in your speaking to Christians, yeah. um, so um, you, come, you also come across a lot of atheists yes. in the park. So mm. what type of approaches? Okay, with an atheist, I, I like to turn them into emotional wrecks within five minutes. Mm. I like to take the intellectual, logical, rational, higher ground away from them, which they think they got. Mm. They, they're coming along with their science and their empirical, their religion, all this crap. And, and I quickly demonstrate to them that a belief can be true without proof. Mm. Yeah? Whether or not you can. And, and then, 
you work out the reasons for that belief. And like we were discussing earlier, what is proof? What constitutes proof? Yeah. You know, and, and you know, I, and, and again, I'm thinking of changing the scenario. Yeah. I'm saying, no, look, I don't have to prove nothing to you. Yeah. What I'll do, I'll tell you why I believe Islam is true and what proof I have for it. And if you want to challenge it, Bismillah, that's yeah. it. With, I don't know why. I, I, I don't know if it's a victim mentality. This is the thing. See, when you look at the Dawah of the Prophets in the Quran, yeah. it was convey. Yeah. It was put the cards on the table, yeah. present Islam. That's it. Yeah, I'm, I'm not here. I don't care if you become Just Muslim. Present it. The reality is, if you if want to believe in atheism, if you've got an issue with it, you come yeah. and challenge it. Yeah, because that's what they're trying to do. Yeah. You, 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 you know, <laughs> you believe in a sky wizard. Yeah. What are you on about? Yeah, yeah, God doesn't exist. Really? Prove it. What? Yeah. The yeah, proof doesn't exist. No, you've got to prove God is. No, I don't. Yeah. You're making the claim. You're the telling me. You're yeah. coming to me and telling me there's no God. Mm. Now, when you're trying to affirm a negative, it's still a claim. Mm. Now, if you have got no proof for your claim, shut up. Mm. Now, you could come up to me and say, why do you believe there's a God? Yeah. Yeah, because I don't think there's any evidence for God. Why do you believe, why do you believe there's a God? Now, that's a fairer mm. approach. Yeah. Don't come and tell me God doesn't exist because you're in problems. Yeah. We, we, we were just speaking before the, yeah, the yeah, past yeah. about, you know, what is proof in the first place? Exactly. See, when an atheist is speaking about proof, they're speaking about empirical evidence. Of course they, they are. They want to see to believe. Yeah. But we have to show them that... Do you know what I say to them people though? That most of what we believe is through testimony no, even before you get to that things. point, even before we get to that point, mm. I say to them, look, if you're a person who believes their eyes mm. and their ears, yeah, and their touch and their taste and their senses. If if that is your tools to, to determine truth, mm. you are someone waiting to be deceived. Yeah? Because your senses can be fooled. Mm. They could be tricked. Yeah. yeah? Magicians and you know, oh, do you know what I mean? Your eyes are too quick for your eyes. Your eyes have been fooled. You think something's here, but now it's here. Mm. And you think, what well, did he make? Boom, oh, oh, boom, no. You yeah. just fooled your eyes. And our senses can be tricked and fooled. So we shouldn't rely on them as, as truth seek. Mm. We utilize them, don't get me wrong, we, yeah. we use them as tools. And I was speaking to you about, we, we have a level of, of certainty. Yes. It's not all or nothing. Yes. You know, these levels of Yaqeen, you know, like, you know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it, yeah. It's not like it's all or nothing. No, exactly. You know, exactly. we can have a level of certainty and belief in something. Exactly. You know, and it doesn't mean that we, we're fully committing. It doesn't mean we're saying it, it might be possible, it might not be correct. You know, you know what I'm saying? It's a level of commitment completely, to that belief. Completely. Yeah. And so, so I think, and this is something new that you guys can take, that we were discussing this today, and I think this is going to become a big, big beanstalk. Well, yeah. well, because I, I, I've, I've grasped the concept, and I'm going to run with What's it. And that? I know you're writing a book on it, but I'm going to... What's that? Uh, the, the concept of that, when someone um, asks me for proof, yeah. I say, okay, does testimony constitute proof for you? Yeah. yeah. And if they say, oh no, that's just people, that's just hearsay, that's mm. just Chinese whisper. Yeah. All right. So just so I understand something, you don't accept testimony as a, proof, as a yeah. measure of proof. No. Yeah. And you can't believe anything in your life is true. Yeah. Because everything is based upon testimony. Yeah. Everything from your mother yeah. to your father, to everyone you interact yeah. with, to the geography of the world, yeah. to the history of the world. It's massive. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, Science itself is yeah, based every, on testimony. Everything is testimony. Yeah. And so, yeah. if, 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 that's a beautiful verse. So if you don't believe in testimony, how are you going to know anything? Yeah. You can't. Yeah. So you of have course, to concede. There's levels of, of, of certainty that we have in different testimonies. Yeah, completely. You know, what Hamza told me he did yesterday, high level of certainty because I trust yeah. Hamza. No reason to deny. Someone, what someone told me, or uh, someone said, someone said, someone said 200 yeah. years ago. And we don't know who these people are. Wait a minute, wait a minute. What then, happened there? Yeah. Okay, we have to, we don't have a stronger belief in that. Exactly. You know? But yeah. then, so, so the point is, so I think very quickly, the atheist is going to come back and concede testimony mm. is proof. So you like that, then? I love it, bro. You're stealing it from me, yeah? I'm stealing it. We had a long conversation uh, off we, camera we about did it. it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be stealing <laughs> my book. <laughs> I, 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 no, I, you know what? I, I, I will play with it. Yeah. But no, what, no, look, look, you know, I, me... What, I'll, uh, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll everyone's on the same. I know, I know. Yeah. I'll tell you what I'll do. Inshallah, I'm going to speak this corner at the end of this month, right? Mm. We'll have a conversation about this, yeah. right? And I'm going to... Let everybody know. I'm only saying what I say because it's in your book. No, no, no. No, 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 no. I'm no. only saying what I say because the likes of Hamza. Uh, yeah, and I know, but still, 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 this is about you, mate. It's about you, mate, John. This book, no, yeah. this is about you, mate. Because yeah. I'm going to be speaking to you. Yeah. Yeah. And you're writing a book on this. Yeah. Yeah. yeah? And so when people can, will see mm. how I rip atheists, <laughs> how I'm going to rip atheists apart with this, I mean, I'm, I'm going to rip them apart, man. 
Careful yeah. what you give me, because I don't just take information, man. <laughs> yeah. I, I, sharp, I sharp. I actually held back uh, yesterday, didn't I? From saying something. Let's get rid of this fly. Do you get me? The thing is, right, I'm seeing a wasp there, right, and there's a fly looking me. I know. Yeah. And for me, my, look, look at my senses. Yeah. My senses think there's a wasp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because there's a wasp yeah. there, and it's, yeah. it's just something here. So, um, you know, yesterday I held back. I was, do you remember I was about to tell you something? I'm not going to tell you because I know whatever, whatever you, you're going to use it. And that's how it's supposed to be. That's the point of it. Yeah, no, that's the no. point of it because. And, and it's not just me who use it because yeah. this is the amazing well, thing, right? Yeah, go on. <laughs> we got you. Pe pe people tell me they're using the five poison arguments in Norway. Yes. Yeah, it's, they, they, it's permeating. Yeah. And, and, I, and I, this is what I would say my position is in the Tao movement today. This is what I would say. I ain't academic. Mm. I ain't you. Mm. I ain't Sabor. I ain't Mohammed Ijab. I'm not Yusuf Pondas. I'm not Adnan Rashid. I'm mm. not Hashim. I'm not Mansour. I'm not Ijaz Ahmed. Mm. I'm not these guys, right? These guys, mashallah, have done the research. They've done yeah. the investigations. This is what I, this is what I get. You it. translate. I'm the, the conduit. I'm, I'm, I'm the connection. Yeah. I'm, I'm the guy who will take what they're saying because Malay people here, yeah. What the hell are they saying? Uh, it makes it sounds brilliant, yeah, yeah. but how do I use that in a conversation? Yeah. So what I'll do, I'll, I'll soak up. Like me, I destroy people in argument for contingency. I heard it once. Mm. I said, "What? Flipping it! Both, both, both. The universe is necessary. Sorry, the universe is contingent. Therefore, it needs a necessary being. That's it. Done. What mm. is a necessary being? Let's determine that. But it needs some. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just like such a simple argument. So, I'll extrapolate the key points, right? And then what I'll do, I'll mm. throw them on a the table. Mm. Right? All right. How do I do it? I'm a salesman, bro. Script, mm. open, middle, close. Right. So how would I bait them in? Mm. Yeah. Then I hit them with that and then smash them with the conclusion. And then what will happen is anyone who watches me do that will be able to do that. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I'm reading the book, The, the you know, Return of the God Hypothesis. The, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to obliterate this. You know, the country, proof. What's your proof there's a God? The universe. Mm. Well, that's not proof. Well, it kind of is. What do you mean? Mm. Well, I don't believe it could exist without a God. Mm. What do you mean? Well, first of all, it means how you, you know what God is. Mm. You know, for me, God is a creator of everything. Yeah, the necessary being. Yeah, mm. and this universe requires something like that to mm. exist, right? And when we look at the fine tuning, whether it's in chemistry, biology, or physics, it all points to an intelligent uh, agency. Because in our human experience. We have, we, whenever we come across information, we know it's the, the result of an intelligent agency. Mm. But for some reason, as soon as we're talking mm. about DNA or the universe or carbon or fine-tuning of mm. you know, all the, the forces of physics, mm. now all of a sudden we, we've, we've thrown that principle away. Why? Yeah. Why? Why have you thrown the principle away? Because it means you have to believe in a god. Mm. You know, and I've read, I know in this book it says that, you know, this scientist says that, you know, that if, if this was anything other than god, the matter's settled. Mm. But it's the ramifications of what it is. So, you know, as, as an atheist, you have to uh, adopt absurd probabilities. Look, my, you know, subhanAllah, we could be here all oh, day. Oh, bro, this I know. Is, uh, so many, you know, I mean... I, I can't believe we were just said it now. You know, sound, <laughs> yeah, but we wanted a bit of backstory, you know. And I always did a third No, no, I love first, the Yeah, yeah, no, but I'm saying, I've been here for like We had a good yeah. talk to five in the morning. Yeah, yeah, I mean, we're speaking a lot, yeah. But that was another topic. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, you can go on forever with it. You know, science itself, only works yeah. if there's uh, order in the universe. Think about that. Yeah, of course it does. You know, if, if there is a, there has to be a creator for science to work. That's what I'm there has to be. Yeah, yeah. You, you, look, you know, I'm going to bully atheists with the magic custard yeah. flex. Yeah, they go, mm. you know, they want to say I believe in the sky wizard. Yeah, you believe in magic custard. Mm. Yeah, you believe in you, you, you. The faith you have to have, mm. the faith you have to have to be an atheist is unreal. Yeah. Magic custard. They, they, this, this, this soup. Whatever it is, yeah, and then the, uh, the cell came, and then it randomly mutated, and then this, this thing called natural selection harnessed this random mutation and turned it into some new creature. Mm. What? And then consciousness just came like this. Yeah. Where, where, where are you getting these flipping fairy tales from? Yeah. Fairy tales! Yeah. And you know this magic custard, yeah? You can't get the magic custard without carbon. Right, and to get carbon, carbon has to be created within stars, and, to, to be, and it has to be a certain fine tuning yeah. for carbon to form. Yeah. yeah, 
And before you can get to the stars, you need to get to the universe. And you need to get to the Big Bang. And you need to get the fine tuning of that before you get stars. Because if you don't have stars, you can't have carbon. If you don't have carbon, you don't get a magic custom. No magic custom, no single cell, no single cell, no fish monkey man. You know what I mean? It's just bizarre. Yeah. And the Emperor's got no clothes on and it's being exposed. Yeah. It really is being exposed. And this guy, you know, this Stephen Myers, this uh, yeah. Return of the God Hypothesis, he's got the Sam Harris's and your Hitchens running. Yeah. He, this had is, that, he had that book on pre order for about two years, didn't he? And, and I, I, was, I don't know. I've only just discovered him. One brother, yeah. very good brother of mine, recommended to yeah. just read this book, bro. He read had this it on book. pre order for like two years. I, I, just, I ordered it like two years oh, ago. Oh, all right. But he wasn't, he'd not finished it. So, it only just got released. Yeah. Wow. You see, I, I didn't know of its existence. Yeah. And that's a, this is the amazing thing. I didn't know of its existence. Mm. Now I know of its existence. Do you know how many people are using these arguments now? Mm. It, it's happening. Yeah, I've, I, not, I've not read the book yet. Um, I mean, did you read the review? Where it says, um, this, this book, it, it does irreparable damage to atheism. Mm. Irreparable damage means you can't repair it. Because once mm. you hear this thing... I've, I've only seen the... the um, the contents. Some of some of the things that I think I, I know where he's going with it. He um, starts with the Judeo Christian. Yeah, yeah. Don't, but don't worry about that. Ignore yeah, that. It's yeah, not yeah. a problem. The point here is this. He's what he's doing, he's showing that all these things, you know, quantum mechanics, mm -hmm. multiverse, all this kind of stuff. It's just more evidence for God. Because mm. there's more things you can't understand. Yeah. It, it, it's more complicated than you used to think it was. So, you know, when, you know, he's like, oh, quantum mechanics, oh, yeah, and quartz and this, that. And he thinks that's demonstrating what? That's demonstrating what we believe. Mm. And that's what he demonstrates in the book. So that the three latest discoveries in the scientific method, that the Christian, the, the, sorry, that the atheist thinks is some kind of mm. evidence for them. Yeah. It's in their face. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, just I'm, but, <laughs> we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna cut you there. All right, I'm we got the Adan. We, we, we will uh, leave it there. But when are you coming back, it's Turkey? Well, that's the million dollars. I will come back soon. Inshallah, we'll 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 do a whole podcast just on Dawa, yeah, and we'll yeah, discuss different yeah, yeah, different so points. Yeah, and, yeah, definitely, uh, definitely, man. Yeah, twenty years, man, I've been doing this stuff. Yeah, no, it's great. To, I think uh, you've heard things today that I don't think I've said before. Yeah, it's great to catch up with you. And I've enjoyed spending time with you the past couple of days. And, uh, yeah, yeah, alhamdulillah. You're I've enjoyed walking around with John Fontaine. I'm John Fontaine in Bursa. <laughs> alhamdulillah. Jazakallah. Barakallah. Salaam alaykum. Salaam alaykum.